This is the blood of the everlasting life. This bread is my body. My deliverance shall happen here. season and the reason for this season and the reason for this is to announce that our Pesach or Pesach Fasica, um, the time that commemorates um, the exodus right of Jah people is coming forward um, in this season the reason for this season and if you don't have a copy of the worthy is the lamb the Rastafari, the first um, Haggadah, which is uh, kind of a narrative. It's, it's what the family gets together and reads and, and, and looks over, you know, reads over and looks over. Because it's very key that we teach our people the half of the story concerning who we be that hasn't been told to us until this present time at the end of the times of the Gentiles. And it's a couple of very important words, you know, we want to proclaim and give ones the heads up for um, Pesach or Fasica or Passover, right? Passover. What is the reason for the season as well as the prophetical of Passover? So the first thing we want to touch on is the dates and it's the eve to the eve, right? From the first week, we can say, in the month of April, April uh, 3rd to the 11th. So April 3rd to the 11th. And we're going to try to make this a little more available if the brothers and sisters also can link ones with the PDF that we have of this particular document right here, Worthy is the Lamb. Um, is this particular document. We have a hard copy right here, but since we have to reposition, right, reposition the cam and everything, let's bring this in. This is what this event recounts right here, right? Now, a lot has been discussed on old Kemet and Egypt and the Hebrews vis-a-vis -vis Kemet. I think a good perusal of this particular document right here the PDF is available for free if ones want to get a, a hard copy, you know, ones are free to get a hard copy. And this is the reason for the season. Now, you see the prophetic verse right there, um, Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord, yod hey uh, Yehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh, if you please shall bring thee into Egypt again. We're in a spiritual Egypt. And you can see this over here, right? This spiritual Egypt, or the Egypt of the West, right? And remember the West side was the death and people lived on the East side in ancient Kemet. One of the reasons why we called ancient Kemet Mitzrayim is the land of Ham, where they did not know Yosef or they had grown ignorant. Look at black people over 40 years, 40 years later, look at the state, the sad state of the so-called black man and woman. So we're in a spiritual Sodom in Egypt is what the word says. But this is a key verse right here, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Right? Yahweh shall bring thee again into Egypt 
or to bring thee into Egypt or Mitzrayim again with ships. By the way, wherever I spake to thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we're not speaking of this old so-called Egypt where it was black on black, right? It was a black on, or it had become a black on black crime, right? Against against the Almighty's people, his Amo, right? His Amo, Ami, Amo Yisrael, right? And there ye shall be sold to your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And all the stocks and bonds that are connected with this um, symbology, right? And we can get into that in some details, but no doubt many other brothers and sisters and and different um, camps have been bringing out some of the basic facts. What you need to do is take notes and study those things for yourself. You, you know, just don't dismiss it, my brothers and sisters. What a time, right, that we're in. And also coupled with that sign, it's a blood moon sign as well. So there's a heavenly, right, there's a heavenly aspect that connects with a prophecy in EUL or in the book of Joel. So Pesach, Fasica in um, this um, in this season. Um, make a note of it. April, the eve of April third to the eve of the eleventh. April third to the eleventh. Um, Passover twenty fifteen. Friday, April third to Saturday, April eleventh. Right and. And there's a very interesting blood moon sign as well. That's Joel. Joel, read the book of Joel. I think it's chapter two and three. Pay careful attention to those heavenly signs. In fact, coming up on the Shabbat, the Shabbat coming forward, Vayikra, right? The first reading in the book of Leviticus for us in this cycle of Torah portion reading and feeding um, is a is a solar eclipse. So some of the technology technology might not be working as well as ones would um, want it to or would like it to. But there are heavenly signs seeking to wake up, right, the Almighty's people, right, and we who have been called forward to preach or proclaim that truth is like the Valley of the Dry Bones. Right now, it's time for the prophecy. We're living in a time of prophecy. Now, this will give you. This is like the seder. This is like the basic order. But there's a key difference between the Jews who call themselves Jews and the way they observe it, and the way redeemed Israel. When it says no man shall buy you, no man, right? No fleshy man, no earthly man can buy us or redeem us. Right, but it's the Adonai from the Shamayi, right? It's I and I am Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I know there's some Hebrews who are like Old Testament Hebrews, but hopefully, Yah willing, we will have the time, right, and the grace of heart and mind to discuss these particular issues. So here's another still right here. That's what it's all about in its fulfillment. But there's a key verse I want to share with you right here from um, Jeremiah, right? Where it says that no longer shall they say, you know, the Lord who brought them out of um, Egypt. But there would come a day and a time where he would make these things new or would renew it, right, for his people. And I see that this is the day and time that we are in in Jeremiah, I think, 23, and seven, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yod Hey Wehe, saith Jah or Yah, that they shall no more say, Yahai, Yahai, that Yahweh lives, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Because we are not in the land of Egypt. Let's overstand the spiritual metaphor of this particular prophecy. This is why this is a very good art. I think it's YT Politics that did this art, but this is a very good art that really tries to explain the Old Testament and the New Testament, right, aspect of the Old Covenant. And the Old Covenant we find right here in um, Yeremiah, right, or Jeremiah. So those who say those Old Testament Israelites who 
might not accept the New Testament, they still know that there is a new covenant that's spoken not just in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament. But the reason for this season right here says that verse 8, Jeremiah 23 and 8, right? So the new, right? The old and the new. Jeremiah 23 and 8 says, but, so they're no longer, verse 7 says, no longer shall they say that. Now, most of the Passover satyrs focus on that aspect out of old Egypt. And we hear, you know, so-called, um, you know, these various Jewish um, mythologies. Let's look at this, the Seder, the Passover Seder. Let's look at some of the elements concerning this. Okay, there's, there's your Kemet, right? But some of the other elements, right? The blood on the on the doorposts. What does that mean in the new covenant? Does that mean that literally we do it as we did in the old? Jeremiah chapter 23 and 7 says that no longer the days are coming. Right, the days, the appointed days and time, this Shemitah year, this double sign, this Makpala, right? Makpala is that double. We just had a double portion. There's a double sign, the blood moons at Pesach, right? And at Sukkot, right? At the beginning and the end of Yahweh's feast and festivals in our Hebrew high holy days and seasons. Why is this happening now? Why is all this Kemet versus Egypt and this discussion going on? Because the Almighty is not willing that any should perish, right? Now, this is one of the old Ethiopic or uh, the calendars right here. That's something about the lamb. We can go into that, pause that right here. Some of the elements from the Beit Israel, the, the Seder, you know, the Seder. And then we also have this Passover, Pesach. Right, Yeshua, they say Jesus, but we say Yeshua, right? Yeshua is our, they say Easter, we say Pesach, right? Our lamb or our Passover lamb. But we're going to strike out the Easter thing, right? We got to strike that out because Pesach is about the lamb. Who is the lamb, right? And right here we have also how the um, Soach, Rata Sibelu, Sibelu. Right, how they ate, you know, how they reclined back in the days that were that were previous to. So let's bring this forward right here, go through some of these right here, and bring it forward to the real reason for the season. Another good um the meal, the Seder, right? The the blood on the doorpost, see the pie, see the fi. Very important this link here, right? The scriptures, the matzah. Right, the Torah, you know, and how do all these elements, right, go together? And why is this important for the once lost but now found Beta Israel? And who are the once lost but now found Beta Israel? That popular discussion going on about Kemet and the Hebrews is so very important. It shows what his will and his, through his spirit, this is being brought front and center. Right. They say, oh, some nigger shit. But he cares about the niggers. He cares about them. Right. And he cares about I and I and us. So, brothers and sisters, you can go to RTG or the Rastafari Groundation site and you can download this Worthy is the Lamb PDF or you can order a copy of the book. If we can get some better prices, we, we hope that there'll be like copies of this at every Seder. You know, where we come together. But there's an important word in the new covenant, right? In the new covenant that actually bespeaks, right? Concerning this image right here. Let's bring this up one more time, right? Between the so-called new and the old or the so-called old and the new. Jeremiah chapter 23 and 7 says, Therefore, behold, look and see. The days come, say if Jah, right? Say if Yah, Yahweh, 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 right? That they, speaking of us, shall no more say Yahai, Yahai, Yahweh, Hai, right? Yahweh, Hai, right? That he lives, which brought up the children of B'nai Yisrael out of the land of Egypt. We're not in the land of Egypt, but we are in the spiritual Egypt prophecy of the scriptures, 
But it says the times come, Jeremiah 23 and 7, that no longer shall we say. So that's what the Jews who call themselves Jews, that's what they do at their Seder. So there's a difference here. And we have to pay attention to the prophets. Right? It says, listen to the prophets and you shall prosper. It says that in the scripture. We'll bring that out as well. But let's bring this out. Jeremiah 23 and 8. It says, but Yahweh Chai, Yahweh Chai, that Jah live, that Yah live, he who be who he be, lives which brought up and which led the seed. Now the seed is speaking of the race or the zar. Right? There's a natural connection. The seed of the Beta Israel. That's us, my people, over here in the West. Whether we call ourselves Black Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, or any of the other nomenclature to describe ourselves now that we have found or we are found. Right? It says Yahai, Yahweh Hai, Yahweh Hai, uh, Yahweh Hai, if you please, which brought up and which led the seed. Of the house of Israel, the Beta Israel, out of where? Out of Egypt? Right? Old Egypt? No. Out of the North Country. Where are we in? Right? The Americas and the Caribbean, the North Country. Right? Out of the North Country and from all countries, all lands. Right? Whither I had driven them. So he's saying, this is what we will say. This is what that fateful generation. I'm saying, look at the signs, my brothers and sisters. We are in that divine time. Are you in the divine mind? And from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Now, this is the word from the true prophets, right? Not that I have a dream, I have a dream. And this is what has brought them in a new kind of a new kind of uh, a neo a neo uh, slavery or enslavement. They've taken the chains off of their hands and their feet. And instead, many of the people, the lost sheeple, have it on their hearts and their minds. So we have the exodus in the old covenant sense and we see this right here this is the black hebrew exodus right or the ethiopian hebrew exodus from the old right but we are in this period and time of the new and here's an important scripture i don't hear many ones bringing out and this is the time not only that we bring it out but in the proper seder a proper order or in whatever order of your group of your family of your camp this is a key word, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 8, verse 7 and 8, where it's showing this new covenant, right? And we know that America is likened spiritually to this Egypt. You see it all over the dollar. We can see it in the so forth and so on. There's a difference. Here we were enslaved, right? And slaves, there we were in bondage. Now, there's a similarity, but there's nothing like what we have gone through in this latter day and time. So old Kemet or old Egypt, if anything, it's the art and the facts from there that proves the scripture, that proves the Devar Ha Elohim, that proves the word, right, of he who be who he be. So brothers and sisters, once again, Passover is... um. Coming forward in this season, this is to announce, just to announce, announcing Passover coming forward in this season, 2015, um, Friday, we have it from Friday, April 3rd, right, Friday, April 3rd, the eve, right, to Saturday eve, the April 11th, and if you want to know how and get a familiarity with, you know, with the the, the, the right and the ritual, the right, right and the ritual based on the scripture, based on who we are. Get a copy of this Seder right here. Worthy is the Lamb, also known as a Rastafari Passover Haggadah. And no, you don't have to so-called be Rastafari in that sense, right? We are Israelites, right? And we're bringing that half of the story that hasn't been told. You know what I mean? Setting setting it in, in the proper order for our brothers and sisters. But as Bob Marley said, if you're a black man, basically you are a Rasta. It's just that many people did not understood what 
that means, because many people did not know that I and I as Rastafari, right? The first proclamation is to the lost Israelites, the lost, you know, the Hebrews. We are Israelites. We recognize that all faithful and true Rastafari, right? Those who are called, those who are chosen, those who are faithful. There's some there's some others who are more into, you know, the music and the herb and some of those things that y'all think that's what I and I is about. Those are all accessories, right? You know, to the so-called crime, right? We are the ones I and I have been waiting for. Father is waiting for that faithful generation, not like our forefathers who might have gone for that okie doke, that 40 years, right? Um, the iniquity of the Amorites, right? Which was not yet full. The heavens are showing us we're coming into the fullness of that day and time, brothers and sisters. So announcing once again, Passover, Pesach, right? 2015, Rastafari and for the Ethiopian Hebrews, Passover, Pesach, April um, 3rd, Friday, April 3rd, the eve to Saturday, April um, 11th, right? From the 3rd to the 11th, the first um, Shavua, Shavua, the first strong or seven days week, right? In the month of April. And remember, this is a blood moon time, blood moon signs as well. This is the proper order for those who have received the call, those who have heard and who are responsible to that call. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Rastafari. Aina is Survival of the Falasha and their faith. In the village of Ambober near Gondar, it is the eve of Pasika, the traditional Passover. The annual cleansing of the synagogue is performed by priests and monks. Monastic life, common to Christian faith, was adopted long ago by the Falasha Jews. Married women mix dough for the ceremonial unleavened bread used in the Passover feast. It is baked on a clay griddle. Many Falasha beliefs are outside the body of Jewish faith. The Falasha do not observe all dietary laws. They know little of sacred lore beyond the Old Testament. And the Sabbath is a woman who intercedes with God for both the righteous and sinners. Passover is an eternal song to Jewish survival, a remembrance of the exodus of Moses and the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt. It is a story more than 3,000 years old, and many Falasha regard it as their very own. They believe that one of the Hebrew tribes struck south from Egypt and settled in Ethiopia. Chanting in Hebrew, the youngest schoolboy asks, why is this night different from all others? Few Falasha understand the language of the Old Testament, but the story of Passover is known to them all. On this night, the flight to freedom began, away from Pharaoh's Egypt, away from the angel of death that brought destruction to the Egyptians, but passed over their houses. So quickly did the Jews depart, they were forced to bake their bread unleavened. To celebrate their escape, unleavened bread is eaten by Jews everywhere on Passover Eve.